On the bench today, a Tektronix PS2521G, a triple power supply, which is very nice and some of it is not nice at the same time. So what is very nice is that it's a triple power supply. It's fairly powerful, two outputs 0 to 20 volts at 2.5 amps and a third output at 0 to 6 volts at 6 amps. Another thing that's nice is that it has GPIB. It's very well built, very tight in there like everything tech and it's digital. One thing that's not nice is that it makes a racket. The fan is way too loud and I'm going to fix that. That's another thing that I don't like either. When I turn it on, this guy, the indicator is red. So very often you miss it among the other red indicators. So I need to fix that to, I need to make it green. But when I turn it on, so output three is at six volt, that's fine. But output two is at zero volt. And output one is at zero volts and I tested it it's actually not putting out any voltage so something's wrong with it because it's used to work we're going to find out what it is and then fix the extra annoyances so I'm not too surprised that one power supply seems to work and the two others don't because inside it's really three completely independent supplies the six volt final at one and on the other side it's two independent 20 volt power supplies everything's duplicated and i have an inkling of what's happening actually there are a whole bunch of fuses and there's the same number of fuses on the back so it's good so it's good that's the main power supply bad 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 and this little daughter board is uh, the accessory supplies for all the control and the D2A stuff. So something blew the fuses. Uh, I don't know what it is. It's really weird that the two of them blew at the same time. So uh, I'm going to take the uh, little board out and check that first to see if the fault would be limited on that one, which would be great. And there we have three screws already removed, and that thing is a daughter so I should be able to pull it out gently. Yes, and here it comes. Twice the same thing. One, two. So I'm really puzzled that they both blew at the same time. A little worried that something has happened to the main board, but it doesn't make any sense too because the main board is two independent things again. So let's see. If we can find what blew this the fuses and if it's limited to this board which would be really nice so look at the schematics of that board already and it's really twice the same thing uh, so if we understand one half we should be good and that's the daughter board over here i can get the fringing out and it's really the simplest linear power supply there is ac comes in rectify two caps Two regulator, negative, positive, uh, so that gives the 25 volts unregulated, the plus 15 volts unregulated, the same on the negative side. And there is a little 5 volt regulator that takes the 24 volts, drops it on the resistor, and regulates it further to 5 volts. Uh, it's a linear power supply, so we can power it with a rheostat and see if we actually get too much current over here when it's unplugged, which would mean the fault is here. If it's fine, then it's the next circuit that's at fault. So since this thing is twice the same thing, I can test it by the half. So I'm going to plug in this one. Okay. So what I've done here is I've removed the fuses. And I've connected two ammeters in their place, which we're going to put in ammeter AC, one tech and one fluke and see if we indeed have an abnormal current. So if you are keen eyed as are many of my astute commenters you will have already spotted that I completely goofed on the yellow fluke meter. I forgot to move the red probe to the amp input. So when I won't see any overcurrent on the fluke side you'll know why. Just use your imagination and put a current reading on that side too. 
And on the other end, I am going to hook it up to a variac. So turn it on and get this one all the way down. And see. Oh yeah, on that rail. Okay, it's not symmetric. It's only on one of the on one of the sides. Yes, you dumb dumb. It's because you hooked up the yellow meter wrong. And we know also that it's this board does it, and it uh, the power supply on this board it doesn't have many components. And there's five or six, so we're going to find that pretty quickly. So what can go wrong? We have a cap, the LM whatever. I mean, it's, it has to be one of those two because I don't see how the cap down. Well, maybe if this one or this one is shorted, that could be. Uh, my money would be on the filtering cap. I'm going to remove it. Okay. Filtering cap off. And everything is still hooked up. So we can redo the same experiment. Ta da! It is still bad, okay. Let me take the other filtering cap. Right, filtering cap number two. See if we still have the problem. We don't. So I bet you we have found the fault in here, which is this cap, but man, if uh, one cap is gone, I bet you the other one is going to go too. So I need to replace both. Let's test it. Oh yeah, this one has a problem. So 188 microfarads, bad cap. I wonder if the other one has gone too. I wonder if the old led go at the same time. No, this one is perfectly good. It's good enough. ESR, 400 milliohms, capacitance, 457. So we'll put that one back temporarily because I don't have 30 volt capacitors. So I don't have that many of the 35 volts, uh, 470. And we'll change the other one. Okay, this one we'll have to do for now and then I'll order the right ones. And change them all. See if we have gotten that part of the supply back into shape or at least not blowing the fuses no 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 good what the heck remove the cap it was okay i put a cap back it's did i put the bad one again eh? i don't think so Caps are bad, maybe. Both of them. Oh yeah, cab is hot. Did I put the bad cap back in? Got confused. I saw that cap tested okay. Yeah, it does. So look at that. That's a cap that tests perfectly okay when not under bias, but that is just totally blown. Okay, so I bet you all the these caps are suspect and I need to change all of them. Dang. Okay, so two, at least I have one new and a used cap, which is never the best. They are capacitors from, oh yeah, that might be, this is from the 1990s. Might very well be part of the capacitor plague okay fine with that cap and then the other one is a new cap so this one shouldn't be a problem very unusual that they both die at the same time okay we're back to normal uh, so that should have repaired one of the halves bet you the other half is the exact same problem 
Alright. One amp. Okay, that's why the fuse fuse blue. One cap gone. Oh, I know why I'm not measuring on that side. I, I was in the, the wrong setting for amps. Okay, we need that. Okay, now this one shows. No, they, they, they both. Okay. All right, the first cap didn't do it. Bits that I fixed the problem. I did. Same problem. Filtering caps. One or both dead. Okay, 204 microfarad. This one's just half gone. 220. One okay. gap. They were both bad. Okay, as predicted, I didn't have all the caps I needed. Actually, I have one more, the 470, 35 volts, um, a new one. So that must have been for the uh, recap of the Behringer mixing table that I did. And I don't have another 470, but I do, I'll do a 220. That will have to do for a while, and I'll put it on the negative side, which is less stressed. So hopefully that should work. Okay. Two new caps. See if we repair that side. Well, we repaired it as, as far as the current's concerned, so it's fine. It's so weird that four caps went bad at the same time. That is, it's like that they had, a, they are capacitors from the 1990s and they have a time bomb in them, which also makes you worried about you know, what are the other caps that are bad in this. Okay, I put new fuses in there, and now user side should blow. They are both fine. Okay, let's remount this, see if we have repair per supply. Okay, we have no fear, we will connect it directly to the power supply, comes in, because I left it on. Uh, so turn it on and see if it disappears or if it stays on. Stays, 20 volts. Came back. Out one. 20 volts. 19.989. Ooh, pretty good. A couple millivolts off. Uh, the second one should be a 6 volt. 5.997 and this oops and the third one should be a 6 volt 2 and that was working before and it's 5.991 okay so that's all there was to it that's, that's the, 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 the bane of, of, of 1990s electronics and a good thing right because if it's a cap you so it takes half an hour and you you know what the fault is uh, but still it's annoying as hell that all those caps go bad i'll order the correct caps and i'll order uh, more silent fans and i'll uh, figure what i need for the led to make it be all right my long-awaited components have arrived from DigiKey. they have everything the 10,000 hours, 105 degree capacitors, not the 1,000 hours, 85 degree one. The correct fuse, the hopefully low noise fan, and the LED, the green thing. They make it, they still make it. So that's another found on DigiKey also. So we should be able to make our definite upgrade. And if you want to upgrade yours, here is the list of parts I got from DigiKey. But don't purchase the green LED bar quite yet before you watch the rest of the video. Here we go. Good Rubicon Japanese capacitor. 82 milliohms. That's what I call a good capacitor. And 464. Four, right on the money probably more if I do it at lower speed 476 excellent that one will last 
a lifetime. All right, the good caps are in, and this is actually made out of two LEDs, I think. Yeah, fits perfectly. Hallelujah. There you go. There you go. Okay, and if I do on. It turns on, but my LED is not working. And that's highly annoying. So I just checked, they are wired exactly the same way. There, there are two LEDs, one on either side. That's not the problem. Actually, I think it does work, but it might not make it through the red filter. See? comes up but once it's through the red filter you don't see it Dang. okay my bad so I should have taken ordered an orange one but I don't or, or a yellow one I don't want to wait for that so I managed to drill two little holes to put a little LED in the middle okay it's not super pretty but it's different Okay, it's the guy that I want. The yellow one, the E2YD. And zero in stock. Due to temporary constraints supply, DigiKey is unable to accept back order at this time. Okay, my other doesn't have it either. So it's going to be, I found five for $14. And I think it was free shipping. So eh, I'll, I'll do that. Finally, the obnoxious fan replacement. So that's the original fan. And I don't know if you can hear it in the camera, but it's incredibly loud. And that's a similar fan. That is much better. So let's replace that. So in keeping with the Complicated mechanical design of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine screws at the back. There's just wires all over the place that are very, very, very tight. And this fan, weirdly, it has no screws. You twist it and off it goes. All right, so it's exactly a, a soldered connection, so I might as well. Cut it over here. So I'll list the part in the doodly do if it fits. Um, please fit 45 degrees. Turn it in. Yeah. And for the splicing, I'm going to try for the first time this little all in one splices that have a a ring of low melting point solder in the middle and then two heat shrink tubes on each side and let's say to simplify making splices so you hook it like this and you look hook the other one like that you make two little hooks so you can pull one with the other and then pull it in the middle and then I tried a second ago with my heat gun my regular heat gun that didn't work I think you need a paint heat gun not just a heat check gun let's try it on the low setting see if that's enough the difficulty here is to make sure you melt the solder before you burn the wire. I think this is too low. More. Ah, 
like it is melting. Okay, that might not be too bad. So that's how they made all their, uh, they reconnected all their equipment at the Connections Museum. And they had to make hundreds and hundreds of these things and they recommended that. So that must be good. So let's hear if that got any better. Ah, night and day, totally livable now. Excellent. Yeah, the yellow diode bars have arrived from actually Germany. Let's see if we can complete the repair and see if that goes through the red filter enough so we can see it. Tada, fits right in. I can tell what's going to fail next. There is an evil Dallas chip. It says non-volatile SRAM, but it's just SRAM with two batteries on top of it, which is why it's so big. So of course the batteries run out and you you can't replace you can't find those things anymore. You have to dig out and replace the battery. Terrible thing. And now the question is, will it shine through the red filter? No, it does not. I can't. I can't hardly see it with my eye. But the camera doesn't see it. Ah, dang! So yellow doesn't work. You really need the orange. Okay, in the end, I opted for a m much more pedestrian solution. I just uh, used my label printer and printed a little frame on transparent tape. And here we go, it's highlighted. All right, I think that will have to do. The reason I wanted to repair the supply is because uh, we want to show off the um, Apollo uh, uplink data command box. And it takes three supplies at fairly high amperage. And this guy, I pretty much max it out, but it works. So I have, uh, what do I have here? So on the one, I have 21 volts at two and a half amps, so the maximum. On two, I have the, the minus six volts. And on three, I have the plus six volts. I add the 21 volts to the six, and that gives me my 27 volts because this guy needs 28 plus six and minus six. And I pretty much, much max everything out. <laughs> I can barely power that thing. It's so power hungry. Uh, let's try it out. On. There we go. There it goes, zero to, zero, zero to seven, and it starts it again. Okay, that's correct, so it works. And when you look at the power consumption of that monster, I am at 4.3 on no close to the max of uh, 5 amps on the supply one. I uh, the minus voltage doesn't draw very much. Supply one is at 1.4 amps, so. I barely can do it with this power supply, but this is much nicer than the setup that we had before with three supplies. Uh, so it will be nicer to transport it and get it to work. So a very useful power supply uh, when you have something that's a little bit power hungry and that needs well-regulated power.